Hello, my name is Jeremy Dow, and today I will be presenting our work on learning high-speed locomotion over 5 kilometers in the real world. Most research on reinforcement learning for robotics relies on training policies and simulation, because it is safer, easier, and quicker to obtain the large amount of data needed. This creates the need to cross the sim to real gap, where the simulation model does not perfectly match reality, so trained policies that are successful in simulation may perform differently and fail in the real world. There have been many previous works focusing on crossing this gap, and no success has allowed his simulation-based learning methods to be executed on physical hardware. However, we argue that if the goal is true real-world deployment of robots, there is another sim-to-real-world gap that must be crossed in order to go beyond controlled lab demonstrations and achieve load controllers that are truly ready for real-world practical deployment. Whereas sim to reals goal is to execute the same motion on hardware as a simulation, and is focused on overcoming modeling inaccuracies, sim to real world is more concerned with motion quality and obtaining a motion that can be executed for a long time, like on the order of an hour or more, in actual, practical, real-world environments. Even though a learned policy may transfer successfully to the physical hardware, it might still be unsuitable for long-term usage. For example, a policy might walk stably, but could still exhibit an aggressive stomping motion that applies large impact forces. This may be fine during a short controlled lab test, but over the course of an hour-long deployment in a real environment, it may cause damage to the hardware. Our goal is to move beyond several minute long tests on a treadmill, and walk outside on real paths until the battery runs out. To try and cross this sim to real gap, we identify several maladaptive behaviors that make reliable execution in the real world difficult and introduce corrective measures that seek to eliminate these undesired motions. These include asymmetric behavior, the twisting of the foot while on the ground, and aggressive motions. Both humans and animals walk using symmetric gates. This strongly suggests that we want our learned policies to produce a similar type of motion. To encourage a symmetric gait, we use an additional mirror symmetry loss during training. This loss penalizes the mirrored action of the mirrored state from being different from the original action. In this case, for the bipedal robot Cassie, mirroring means swapping the left and right leg states and actions. Adding this extra term makes our policies more symmetric as desired and has the added benefit of making the motion more uh, easier to control and predict while being commanded by a user. We've also noticed that during long outdoor tests, the feet on a robot wears down extremely quickly. This is a good example of a problem that will only appear over time and is not apparent in simulation or short indoor tests. We've observed that our policies tend to learn a foot twisting motion when in contact with the ground, which makes this issue worse. To fix this, we add in an additional reward to encourage the foot orientation to stay flat and forward facing at all times. While this does eliminate the twisting motion, we still see significant wear on the feet. During a single hour long outdoor test, brand new feet were worn down through the rubber and to the aluminum of the feet as can be seen in this picture. This suggests that there is something else at play here that we likely need to re-examine. Mm -hmm. We additionally penalize the policy for producing large ground reaction forces to reduce the stompiness of the learned behavior. This reduces shocks to the system and can prevent damage to the motors and other hardware degradation. The policy shown here on the left is trained without the force penalty and clearly produces much stronger and louder footsteps than the policy shown on the right, which is trained with the force penalty. By combining all these techniques, we were able to train a policy that is capable of running a 5K outdoors in a real-world environment in 53 minutes. We would like to acknowledge all members of the Dynamic Robotics Laboratory, the funding agencies of our lab, and Intel for access to computational resources. Thank you for listening.